now that we've established a definition for continuity and looked at some of its basic concepts, we want to use that to solve a particular type of problem. So first we want to talk about uh, what has to happen for a function to change from a positive function value to negative. So there's a couple of different ways that this can happen. So if we start off with a function that's, that initially has a positive function value, and at some point changes over to have a negative function value, meaning it dips below the x-axis, at some point, assuming our function is continuous, it has to, have, it has to take on a function value of 0 at some point. So at that value of x, our function value becomes 0. Another way this can happen is if our function has a point of discontinuity. So here, our function value starts off positive, but we have this hole or break, this discontinuity, and then we can jump down to a negative function value. Or similarly, we could have something happen like that if we had a discontinuity that took the form of a vertical asymptote. So in order for our function value to change from positive to negative, either our function has to cross the x-axis, meaning it has to be 0 at some point, or we have to have a point of discontinuity so that we can have a break or jump. And the same would be true for it to change from negative to positive. So to solve inequality problems, what we're going to do is look for what's called partition numbers for our function. So those partition numbers are any values of x where our function is equal to 0 or discontinuous, which with polynomial and rational functions is the same thing as being undefined or really just with rational functions, since polynomial functions are continuous everywhere. So we need anywhere where our function is equal to 0, because that's a point where it may cross over, and we need any points where it's discontinuous, because it may jump from being positive to negative. Keep in mind, though, just because we find those points isn't going to guarantee that that's a point where it jumps from one to the other. For instance, we could have a point of discontinuity here, and this function could have picked up just a little bit below that, and remain positive. So we're going to need to find these particular points to consider, but then we're going to have to construct a sign chart to actually verify that it does jump from positive to negative or negative to positive around that value. So let's start off by using a sign chart to solve this given inequality. So what we want to do is start off by factoring this as x minus 6 times x plus 3 and then setting that equal to 0, because we want to find anywhere our function value is equal to 0. So this gives us values of 6 and negative 3 to consider. And then since this is a polynomial function, it's never undefined, so it's never discontinuous. So our only points to consider are 6 and negative 3. What we want to know is, where is our function value less than 0? So we're going to use these values of negative 3 and 6 as points where we know that our function is equal to 0. And now what we need to do is choose test points in between those values to determine where is our function value positive and where is it negative. So for instance, we could look at negative 4 as one of our test points, 0, or 7. Again, we could use any other numbers as long as they just fill those open intervals in between those numbers. So if we evaluate x squared minus 3x minus 18 is less than 0 at negative 4, that result would be 10. If we evaluate this expression at 0, we would get a value of negative 18. And if we plug in 7, we would get a value of positive 10. So here, our function value would be positive. So in the interval from negative infinity to negative 3, our function value is positive. Then it changes to negative and changes back to positive. 
meaning the interval that's going to be a solution for our inequality, which is where our function is negative, will be on the interval from negative 3 to 6. So the sign chart is going to be critical to this problem. It's not enough to simply find those two points. We need to then construct the sign chart and look for which intervals, on which intervals, our function has positive values, which it has negative values, and then which of those intervals solves the inequality, that original question that we were trying to answer. In our last example, we'll start off similarly. We'll look at where this function is equal to zero. So we can factor this as x minus 1 over x plus 1 using the difference of squares over x minus 3. Setting that equal to 0, we really only have to worry about the numerator. So that's going to give us values of x equals 1 and negative 1 to consider. So then we need to determine where is this function going to be undefined. So our function will be undefined whenever x minus 3 is equal to 0, which means a third point to consider is what's happening around x equals 3. So we proceed in a similar fashion. We'll start off with these points where we know our function has a value of 0. And then at x equals 3, we have a point where it's undefined. So instead of a 0, we'll just put an x or some other symbol there just to indicate that that's a point where it's undefined. So we could, again, choose some test points, as long as there are any values in between those intervals. <clears throat> if we plug negative 2 into our function, we'll get a negative result. So from negative infinity to negative 1, our function is negative. If we plug in 0, we would get a positive result. If we plug in 2 to our function, we would get a negative result, and plugging in 4 would give us a positive result. So we're interested in where our function value is less than 0. So that'll be from negative infinity to negative 1. Union will skip the interval from negative 1 to 1, so it's positive, and include the interval from 1 to 3. <clears throat> 